All right, so in our last video, we talked about my everyday lockpick kit. Let's talk about what I might call my everyday general tool bag kit. Now, does this mean I'm carrying around in my backpack every day? No, but it does tend to appear with me at just about every time I go out of town. It's somewhere in my luggage or in my gear bag because it's, it's a problem solver of a kit. This is not my work penetration kit. This is not my field kit for breaking into buildings. That's a series of bags and other things that maybe I'll show off in future videos that lives in a giant pelican case. No, this is just my return this to me if I left it in the hotel lobby at LockCon. This is my, hey, I can probably get into that room over there or this container over here kind of kit. To start, simple hand tools, right? Being able to have a screwdriver in a hotel room, either big or small, just a problem solver, right? And if you've ever seen any of my slides in my trainings, the little six gun from Vera Tools, including, of course, the spanner bit, because you always want your number six spanner bit if you're coming up against tamper-resistant installed uh, card readers and the like. But if, you, if you've never used one of these, I mean, it's just a really gorgeous design that you can pack down really small, have everything you want, for a slightly even tinier set Bobak gave me this years ago. Weeha! German engineering as well. Beautiful set of just really, really nice regular bits, some Torx bits, you name it. Every now and then you do encounter security Torx, and of course the, the Vera gear will usually make mincemeat out of it with a full set. I don't carry my full-size Veras, but I do carry some security Torx, just kind of Allen Key style folding kit. Getting into more bypass gear. You have seen traveler hooks before. I always keep one because you can never have enough of those. What is this bypass tool? It almost looks like how I store my American padlock tool, but it's not. This is an Adams Wright push wire. If you've never seen one of these and how quickly you can try to attack commercial dead latches on commercial properties, it does work pretty well. It's a little too uh, tiny and weak to be jammed into this kit and bouncing around my pocket though, so it lives in the larger tool bag. I mentioned Peterson gear in the past. Having a supply of mini knives on hand for decoding, for bypassing, yes I do have one of the cheap knockoffs, but there really is no, uh, no comparing anybody else to the, the original genuine Petersons. You can see these have had a few hot suppers but they are still kicking along because you just can't destroy them. The metal he uses is really high quality. Further down, we have what I will call the locksmithing bag. We're going to get into that in a minute. Let's go over to this side pocket, starting with a set of calipers. Cheapest one available on Amazon, the Ultratech General Tools, with a little flap of paper in the battery slot just because this gets mashed around, beat up, banged around in my bag. It doesn't matter if those buttons get pressed, it's not turning on. And if it gets so mashed around that it's broken, eh, I'm out 20 bucks. Piano wire. From the two super tiny number 8s and 9s up to a 13 for a little more heft. This, you'll see us inserting this back behind door latches, especially if there's a long guard plate, something that you can't reach. Having a little extra piano wire as a bypass aid, very helpful. Another bypass aid, or I might even say an access control attacking aid. This is my magnetic attacks kit. So what do we have here? A few things. Some spare little magnets. What are these for? Well, if you've ever taken one of our trainings, you would know that it's for di disabling door contact sensors. Now, how do you know where to insert a magnet into a door frame if you're trying to mask off a door contact sensor? Well, if you've never played with magnetic viewing film, it is a really neat way to determine if there's magnets inside of something. Not really practical to insert this up into a door jam. That is why we have our magnetic probe tool right here. If you have never used one of these, it is really kind of fun. This wand will point in the direction and show you the polarity of magnets that are in its field of view. So wave this around the door, find where the magnet is, disable it, knock your door contact offline if you're not using a high security door contact. Excellent to have those around. And down in here, speaking of door attacks, yes, I do carry a pack of door bypassing shims. 
You can fabricate these out of found materials, but I do have a nice original pack from Brockage. Flat roll of gaffer tape rounds out the thin pocket. Never know when you're going to need some. Keep some around an old hotel key. You'll thank yourself for it. Getting down to the nitty gritty bottom here, another multi-tool in the bottom. I love this one by Gerber. Uh, it's just one that I've had for years, and it lives in here because this is in my checked bag, not in my carry-on, obviously. Too many blades. What is in this little tin? Well, a couple things that you will see. One, a UV flashlight. That will come into play later when I show you something in the other kit. And film. Why would I have film? Well, if you've never seen, the complement to the under-door attack is the over-door attack. carry some spare batteries. If your flashlight runs dead or if your mouse stops working, by all means, there you go. Not the best battery life in the world, but if you've never seen these, I don't know if these are even available anymore. These were, I don't know if they were a Kickstarter or what the heck they were years ago. The USB cell, just a AA battery, but it is rechargeable in a USB-A port. These will be even less relevant when devices all charge via USB and USB-A doesn't exist anymore. But now, what about what I was calling my locksmithing bag? This is just a general problem solver bag for almost anything tiny and mechanical lock related. So you're going to see follower tools. You're going to see a whole array of bypass and disassembly tools. We have a set of jam pins. If you've seen those in my lectures before, absolutely, I can upgrade a door if something needs to be done little slicing hook I've gotten through just you know small uh, you know just small cuts to make I've even stripped wire with it before a lot of extras on the neodymium magnets there beautiful pinning tray I don't know who made these at a tool event a lifetime ago I think uh, maybe the MIT kids made these at a lockpick village they were giving them out and of course my lock servicing tools somebody 3d printed a little screw cap removal tool, the absolute best, best follower tool that has ever existed for Schlage with these little ball detents, so clink, 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 in and out. And if you've never seen me do the, uh, <laughs> the threaded tap tool to go ahead and shred up the inside of a lock chamber if you're pinning up using serrated pins just to be an absolute monster against future picking attempts, well, that's in there. I had told you I would talk about the UV the, uh, light that I have. That's because I also have a container of UV powder. What would this be for? Well, it just looks like regular dust, right? Under UV, that fluoresces really, really brightly. It's a little bit of a messy attack, but we have used this to try to snag pin combinations and pin codes from digital displays or from keypad displays. Key blanks, obviously, if you're going to make a key on the fly or impression a key, good to have around. Also, if you're working on making keys or copying keys, these are known as all section keys, so top section keys for a variety of brands. These are not conventional key blanks. These are keys that will fit all different varieties of the Schlage keyway or the Yale keyway and on and on little magnifier tool in here again useful for impressioning attacks or useful for any kind of small tabletop inspection as needed and it folds up nice and tiny and compact now is this every tool in my toolkit ever that I've ever found useful no it's just what I think is useful to have in the field kind of my hooligan key ring a grab bag of things that I will never keep 
in my pocket kit, but are nice to have around. Cross picks. This looks like, uh, you know, this is these are the Emka industrial keys, another cuff key, a bunch of crazy lockout keys, some Marshall keys for automotive attacks, another CH751 because you can never have enough of those, and on and on and on and on. Additional blanks for impressioning? No, not blanks for impressioning. What are these? These are stepwise testing keys. Well, we're not going to get into that in this video, but they are eminently useful for other purposes. Sticker dots, again, for emplacing those magnets in position when you're trying to disable a contact sensor. Nice to have perfectly round stickers ready to go. And as we get to the bottom of the bag, what do we have here? We have a tubular pick and we have an old impressioning grip. Both really useful tools to have. They're not the kind of thing that I want to keep around in my pocket at all times. Again, the pocket kit or just the in my backpack kit versus the I have it in my room kit. Am I impressioning locks in the field with any regularity? No. Am I encountering tubular locks anymore with any real regularity? No. But when you do come across one, it's nice to have. When you frankly come across a need for any items like this, it's good to have and you're kicking yourself if you don't, but it's not practical to pack the entire kitchen sink. This is about as minimal as I've ever gotten it to keep something just in the bottom of my suitcase that isn't an inordinately huge bag. This is just, you know, a Husky bag from Home Depot, about the size of a thick book. With that, I can solve almost any entry problem I come across and a lot of lock servicing problems too. And frankly, much like going home on the holidays and doing tech work for your family, servicing and repairing and repinning locks is something I do far more for others than actually breaking in. Good luck out there. Such UV, so glowy, very high school dance. Wow.